got to blow 25 to get him to bite. Oh, bar jacket. Oh, there's one for the cabin's table. That eat all right right That's there. That's a crab buddy. eater there. Yeah, that's a little better jack. I'll take that one for sushi. You were calling it a blue runner. It's very close. Nice jump. <laughs> I've got to get my nerves in motion. I've got to fire as big as the ocean. I know it's just a crazy notion. I'm going into the road. Motors in motion. I've got to fire as big as the ocean. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. So, sliding nice. Had a little free time, got a brand new Yellowfin. If I just Steve up, do a little wreck fishing. It's gonna be a little windy, so I have a, only a few choices where you can go, but the choices are close by. Hogs K is right in the middle of the keys and it actually sticks out into the reef line a little bit further than any other spot. So at four miles, we're actually at the reef and then most of the wrecks we like to fish in are another mile out. Captain Scott wanted to get offshore and do a little bit of wreck fishing here. You know, these guys, they have some great wrecks right off of the resort. Scott's made a living fishing on those wrecks. You know, it's, it's, it's always a surprise on what you're gonna catch when you're wreck fishing. You can catch anything from an amberjack to a shark to a mutton snapper, to a black grouper. Countless, countless uh, species of fish are on these wrecks here in the Florida Keys. Hey, it's wreck fishing. We need bait. I've got penned up bait. I'm gonna grab a few of those. I got my live bait here in the cage. I'm gonna scoop them one at a time, take real good care of them. I could scoop a bunch, but one at a time. And just in case we can't catch any fresh ballyhoo, we still have offerings that I know a mutton would love to have. The go-to fish is the mutton snapper. It's the king of the bottom fish. It's king of the snappers. The mutton snapper is unique. They like to lay outside the rack, not on it, which is great because they won't dive into it. They like noise, so we use nice big leads, eight ounces, 10 ounces, even up to 12 ounces, depending on the current. And you want to hammer it in the sand. You want to hit the bottom, bounce the bottom, and create a little noise. I'm ready when you are, Cap. You ready for this beating? I'm ready to go catch a mutton snapper or an amberjack. All right, let's do it. Oh, ringleader was flapping in the wind this morning. Guarantee it. My my shade, some of the straps came off of her. Oh, really? Didn't no tears so. though. So we're going to catch ballyhoo first. Yeah, we're gonna catch just one pop on them. It's it is ballyhoo season. I'm figuring no problem going out to any patch reef, chum in for a few minutes, and hopefully a, a big school will pop up behind the boat. This time of year, the bait of choice is obviously the ballyhoo. Um, Scott had the ballyhoo figured out there at uh, Tennessee Light, and we started the morning right there. I picked Tennessee Reef from my first location. We pulled up alongside the lighthouse, and boom, there was a nice school there. That's game over, baby. Whenever uh, the fishing is good, especially the ballyhoo bait fishing, as soon as I have three dozen to 40, I am good. Because those baits are gonna be hot at the end of the day, and if I use 40 baits after three o'clock, then I'm having a heck of a day. You lay down something dead, mm, fish comes up, sniffs at it, you know, he inspects it, he might eat it, he might not. Whereas if you've got a real frisky live bait, it, the fish comes up to him and he runs, you know. And when he runs, it's a reaction like a dog. I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. If you ever run from a dog, he's gonna bite you. So just hold your ground, you'll be better off. Tip Tuesday. It was so rough for us. We, we were limited on how many wrecks we could hit. There was a big down sea swell, so we just kind of buttoned our stuff up and kind of idled down to it. Even though you got a bit bad forecast, doesn't mean you shouldn't give it a try.
Can't get enough into the blue? Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag us in some of your big fish photos, and we'll feature you as fan of the week. See you there. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad, go with confidence. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Waypoint. By Yamaha, reliability starts here. And by Ameritrail. Hawks K Resort. Power Pro. And Costa. That was a gust of wind right there, buddy. <laughs> well, my favorite wreck I've fished my whole life is a shrimp boat wreck off Duck Key. I've caught everything there that swims. Pelagic, sailfish, gobias, wahoo, kingfish, barracudas, and then the bottom fish, the mutton, black groupers, gag groupers, half green pompanos. It is one-stop shopping when it's, when it's right. You always want to catch the mutton. The mutton is the prize fish, you know. It, it truly is one of our, our prettier fish that we have here in the Keys. It's a great table fare. It, it's a trophy. You know, it's not going to run you into the wreck. It's not going to run you into the rock. A mutton snapper tends to run out. Muttons are really curious. Even if they're not going to eat your lead weight, they're going to come check it out. And then right after the lead goes by, you're offering them a fresh ballyhoo, deboned or alive, oh. a fresh goggle eye, deboned or alive, a hot little cigar man or a pilchard. Whatever you throw down there, he's all of uh. a sudden, it's going to be in his kill zone. Ah. Real estate? It means you set up a good drift. I'll be retying. But whenever we're doing this wreck fishing, most of the time what we'll do is we'll have a couple bottom rods rigged up, which consists of like an eight ounce, 10 ounce sinker, depending on the current, the wind. You know, a 30 foot shot a liter, and those will be your two bottom rigs. You know, our Shimano uh, cold snipers, uh, the butterfly jigs, any of these other uh, metal jigs, because while you're dropping a bottom bait, you can flick that butterfly jig out and, uh, and work it a little bit, and you can get a reaction bite. You know, you catch all kinds of jacks and kingfish and, and different things. Got an Amico? Possibly an Almaco. Oh yeah. That one's the perfect size, yeah. You want it? No worms? No worms in that little guy. No, no. That's gonna go right on. What size limit on them devils? Any idea? You get both hooks in him? Yeah. <laughs> Going both ways? Yeah. I'm just gonna let him go, okay? That's fine. Fishing the wrecks here off of Hawks K, you know, they're close. Uh, the water's not too deep. You know, you can feel the bite. You're gonna catch a array of species, you know, almost everything the Keys has to offer. Every time we're up here, we do spend a day out there wreck fishing because it, it's always something new. I think the beautiful thing about the shrimp boat, besides location being straight up from duck, is the fact that it's over white sand. It's probably over a quarter mile from the reef line, sitting on a basin of white sand. And with all that debris down there, it's just become a mecca for uh, all types of pelagic fish. Shark! What you got, buddy? Atlantic sharp nose, baby. Sweet! A lot of times we catch these little sharks, we call them Atlantic shark nose. They fight hard, but they give up easy. It's telling me as a captain that the muttons are there because they're all, whenever you're catching muttons really well, you're gonna catch a few of the Atlantic sharpness. 
they're always a good sign to give you hope to make another drop. Oh, it's Mutton's best friend. You know, to make it exciting if you let him bite you. <laughs> Bet he would like to bite me. Come on. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Deadly. Oh, nothing like blowing 20 mile an hour, 25. Doubled up on the Flemish cap. <laughs> At least when, uh, when you're wreck hopping here, you don't have to have so much going. 600 foot anchor line, sand balls, chum, live bait. I'm you can just it. pop from spot to spot, catch some dinner, and get on, get on down the road. I mean, I know. You. I'd throw the anchor in a heartbeat right here. I'm just <laughs> joker. Right it's now. It's just the difference between being all that way down where you're fishing. Man, that, we, what a great mark. Yeah, I'd throw the anchor on that mark. I'll do it. But yeah, it makes it easy. Stop and shop. Getting a bite. You are? Oh yeah, buddy. Just gotta blow 25 to get him to bite. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell on TV how windy it is, but it's blowing 28 mile an hour. How far past the wreck are we? Good ways. Moving at 1.8. Non-drag pulling? I think it's Blue Runner. <laughs> Big Blue Runner. Oh, bar jagger. Oh, there's one for the captain's table. That eat all right right That's there, That's a buddy. crab eater there. I call bar jack. Scott calls it yellow jack. I, I think it's a yellow jack, actually. I just always called him a bar jack growing up. Yeah, that's a little better jack. I'll take that one for sushi. You were calling it a blue runner. It's very close. Nice jump. <laughs> Lip him like a bass. Love them cut. Look at them bars on him. Them bars are beautiful, man. And the pecs are so long. This, is, this guy eats a lot of crab. His meat's really light. Makes beautiful sushi. Another, another variety. Never know what's on the wrecks until you get out to the wrecks. All right. It's getting windier and windier. We're close to home, but the muttons are here. We've got a yellow jack. We're gonna make a couple more drifts. And then the wind was really moving us fast, but we were making good drifts and hitting my marks every time. Oh, nothing like blowing 20 mile an hour, 25. Doubled up on the Flemish cap. <laughs> the last time I was up here, I was blowing 25. <laughs> Quit coming up here. Holy. <laughs> See, it's probably, I got the same, like a little Almaco like last time. Like that one you caught earlier, but just smaller. <laughs> you got three jacks, amber jack, yellow jack, Almaco jack. Oh, his twin brother. Little fella, I'm glad he's not 30 pounds. Amber jacks and the keys are on all our deep water wrecks. They're bruising fights. I mean, when you get into an amberjack, he's not gonna rock you up. 
He's not gonna get in a wreck, but he's gonna fight on the bottom and wear you out. It is the one equalizer fish for that guy that just wants to catch something big and doesn't even have an idea what he's asking for. Gotta be a mutton with my name on it out here today. Ameritrail already makes trailering easy. Now with the new Yellowfin Ameritrail, it comes standard with a Vortex hub. It has a five year warranty, no maintenance. I don't care how many miles, I don't care how many times you dunk it, this hub is gonna last. You're not changing bearings, you're not greasing, you're doing nothing. Also standard is the stainless steel caliper. That is the braking system. That thing is what always fails on most trailers. It is standard now with Yellowfin's Ameritrail. If you wanna take it a step further, you can get the stainless steel rotor. That will mean that you are going to be maintenance free for five years under warranty. You will not have to do anything to this trailer. If you want to rinse it off, I recommend it, but you could not if you don't want to. It's going to be there for five years, ready to serve you. If you want to clean it up and make it look pretty, we've been using the Scotch Bright pad. Shine her up, she'll look like a million bucks, and it'll be a great investment for you. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Scales, every degree of water. Yeti, built for the wild. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. West Marine, for your life on the water. And by Shimano. Big Pine Key. Nikon. Ocean's Edge Resort and Marina and by Spear One Charters. I got a good one. Okay, I see color. Floating. I like the color. I think that's a mutton, buddy. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Come on, be a mutton. Acting like a mutton, buddy. Oh, you called it. Tried to scare you. Nice one. That is the real deal there, buddy. Well, you gotta take that time to get those fresh ballyhoos sometimes. They'll eat everything, but man, that old fish has been through some battles, hasn't it? That's a good one there. We out smart. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Nice we'll fish. Take them any way we can get them. Heck yeah. You're gonna be able to smoke that throat. Oh, that's gonna feed, that throat will feed, make 10 tacos. That is a beautiful fish there. Get him in the Yeti, I'll get us back in the right spot. All right, man, I'm all about it. All right, man. Look at that. Man. Very nice. I think that was one of the biggest muttons I've caught off of Ox K in the years that we've been coming up here. The sun's starting to go down. It's getting rougher. It was time to call, say uncle and head on in. We weren't going to catch anymore, but we had a beautiful trophy, 18 pounder that I had to get in, get filleted, and get on the green egg so I could cook Steve dinner that night. Nice and easy on the ride in, buddy. No rush. I'm really looking forward to see what he turns that mutton snapper into. Every time I talk to him, he's got a new recipe and a new way to try something. It's all, all of it's always very, very, very tasty. I'm gonna get my working surface wet so nothing sticks to it. The new bub blade, multi-kit. My favorite blade, the seven inch taper. I'll switch to the uh, flex to trim, but now I gotta turn this big old mutton into dinner. Whoo, he's seen some battles. Until it met Steve Roger. All right. The beauty of this, they have big, thick scales protecting their beautiful white meat. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. I'm just gonna cook this filet right on open flame. 
and the scales are going to protect the meat and cook the fish at the same time. So quick to, to cook and easy to clean. Clean them and just snap the bones. Boom. Saves your blade. So I'm going to switch my blade to this trim blade. I could use that one, but I've got this one. I'm going to take advantage. Get rid of the rib bone. Good for the pelicans. All thing left to do is just get this red line out. We're going to cut the whole red line out, the whole length of the fish. It'll leave a little cavity in there where you can put whole garlic, herbs, whatever you want to do to spice up your fish while it's cooking on the green egg. So now we have whole filet, but there's room for lemon wedges and garlic right there. After a long day underwater, I don't want a lot of prep. And uh, just taking a mutton, just filleting it skin on, scales on, and just setting it on a grill is a matter of just starting the grill, getting it hot, and melting a stick of butter and a little garlic. And then add a little salt, and boom, in 10 minutes we have a dinner for 15 people.